Um, I'd like to practice some short meditation with you. Um, so, um, since we have only less than one month to go, right? And there's um, some materials, so you know the basic uh, The models of this are this is the DVD and ACP ready. So, I think that since we And the stress. Okay. So um, this morning, the light, uh, if you can, uh, you will find this frequency for three times. Please find this, please recall the number in the now. Okay, for yourself. And we hit the bell to start, and then we will find this and hit the bell. <coughs> yes. Yes. We do yeah. five minutes three times. Yes. And after the bell, we write down our breaths and we'll yes. go again. Yes. Okay. I will lift the bell to start. We will really stop. Right? Then you know we stop to go down. Then after that, then we stop again. And we will do it. Three times. Okay. So, so you can see how much. Can deal with the own uh, with emotion internally. And uh, probably Monday, if uh, you can, you can bring honey, honey food, apple, and so that we can practice uh, mindfulness uh, eating and tasting. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so today we just sit for a few minutes. So if people come to okay. Everyone's clear, right? Families, all the people. And you do it in the bell, but you win. And that's that it hit the bell. The bell's to start, and we'll hear a ring from the phone. Stop. stop. We hear the ring from the phone, we write down the number. And, and then the bell will go. Stop. Okay? Three times. Three times. Very clear? Mm -hmm. Hey, one question. Do we start counting from like one again once we hear the yeah. five minutes are up? Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Count, you. you count continuously, and when you hear the bell, even when you hear the sound of the uh, my cell phone, you yep. stop. And then when you start over from one, we'll they stop and go. Okay. Yes. Any, uh, okay. Yes. Any questions? Do you have any and we're going to meditate three times. <laughs> 
Five minutes each. He's going to ring the bell to start, and the phone's going to buzz to stop. And after the phone buzzes, you write down the number of breaths. If he's going to ring the bell, we'll start right again. Okay. It says, it's clear, so write that out. Okay? It's clear. Wait for you. So be mindful with your breath, and watch your breath naturally, of course.
Yes.
So we see the difference in the numbers. <coughs> Same. Increase. Increase or decrease. <coughs> The second two were exactly the same, but they increased the first one. Okay. The first couple times you see the sound small. A little. A little. Okay. I tried to. Different sounds actually. So, do you feel your breath rhythm? Mm -hmm. Do you feel your heartbeat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. It's really important for me, and I do it to let myself breathe naturally. Yeah, that's like, I don't know, like when I'm trying to focus on the breath, it seems like I'm kind of focusing on how I breathe. I don't know how I breathe naturally, so it's kind of hard to let it go naturally, and I kind of want to control it. It's normal. It's for the beginners. We have a tendency to look outwardly, but when we look inwardly, with our breath, we feel that we control. Right, but eventually, get used to that. Remember, I give you the analogy like um, when we first uh, drove the car, after we obtained the driver license, we feel that we control the car, right? Right? But now it's the drive naturally. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 the more we do, the easier for us to get used to that. Yeah. So, how about you? Mine went down. But that is better. It, yeah, it's, so it's, you mean the, the breath slow when your mind comes down. <coughs> remember? Remember I told you the, uh, the breath is like the thermometers of the body and mind, right? When are, when are my so agitates, right? Our breath will be faster. When our mind comes down, it's slower. So is the body. So you don't need to control it, you need to slow down. You need to let the whether it's speed up or slow down, it doesn't matter. But when it's slowed down naturally, you know that you want to calm down. Alright. How about you? Um, my first and third were the same. I got 73, 70, 73. Okay, so how about your mind? You have a, a lot of motion going on in your mind, you can put back your um, I didn't really feel much emotion at all. It just was kind of almost calm as an emotion. Um, I was just focusing on the breathing. Very good. As, as, so you lost track sometimes too? Um, yeah, a couple times I started to think of other stuff. And I'd be like, oh, I should be counting. And then I realized I was like still counting in the back of my mind. And the numbers just pick back up. If you energy? When you carry breath, you feel energy flowing in your body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you lost track of coming or you um, can't I, Once I got over like 50, I, I did the same thing as him. Like I, I could feel my mind just start to wander. And, and then, oh, oh, just be counting. But I didn't lose count because like yeah. the counting was going on, like you said. Yeah. Um, like, oh, counting. Don't forget to count. But you feel you, you have deep connection with your mind now, your heart now. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's much better than in the beginning of class. Yeah, very much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, beginning of the semester. Hello, about some emotions, some part that may interrupt um, you much at all. Not really. No, it's yeah. it's getting much better. There's much more clear yeah. now than it was at the beginning of the semester. Especially in the morning, right? One is much better, but if you may have seen after this, it will be different. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, I went down, but I stayed at the same for the last two. I had 37, 32, and 32. And um, I was, my mind was wandering pretty much the whole time, but it was kind of like in the background. And I didn't really, um, I think I counted pretty accurately. So, yeah, I was really aware of all of the energy. You feel you control your breath or your, your breath flow naturally? My breath um, flowed naturally, but I had a tendency to want to get as much out of my breath as possible. That's not. <laughs> but I mean, I get. Yeah, that's it the was, tendency, right? 
Um, but then, like, if a short breath came, I allowed it to come. It's just that, like, I was, I, I did feel really calm. And so it was like, <coughs> it felt good to take long breaths. So it's really just did. Whether it's long, <laughs> whether it's long or short, doesn't matter. It's yeah. your, it's just your step now. Yeah. Your step. So you have any emotions that may interrupt your counting? Um, nothing that would interrupt the counting, but I was really aware of my emotions and all of the different things I was feeling. But nothing too overwhelming. So up to you, 50 minutes to remember who you are? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it, it allowed me to focus on all of the things I was feeling. And I was kind of doing a body scan too because I was feeling my heartbeat and I felt the energy and so it allowed me to be more in tune with what's going on with me today. And um, what is this? The energy boots? Is that, is that right? The energy boots? With, with, uh, <laughs> the candy, the body cell, or the gas station that when you bring up that Five-hour energy? What's that? Five-hour energy? I don't know. Or just like energy monster drinks. Yeah, so when you drink, right, you feel more energy, right? But it's in the long term, it's unhealthy, right? Yeah. Right? You have a couple of right? Have a coffee energy drink. Yeah, what's that? What's the the brand name? Uh, It's a monster coffee. Oh, yeah, monster. That's right. That's right. It's monster. Yeah, it's a boost energy on the spot, right? Instantly. But in long term, maybe not, maybe not healthy, right? And coffee, it provides you energy, but I read once that tea is, tea also has caffeine, but it, the thing that's in coffee isn't, the thing that causes you stress when you drink coffee isn't the caffeine, but it's something else in coffee that makes you jittery and stress, stressed out, but yeah. also energetic. Yeah, anyway, and my point is that for this type of drink, First, uh, you can get the energy boosted instantly, but the long term is, is not healthy. But in my opinion, I see that within few minutes, within 50 minutes, you see the clarity in our mind. So how do you feel with that? 50 minutes? Um, I feel better after meditating, which is that I have to Still there. <laughs> that's your, that's your, that's your, just, no one can have this. They say, I accept you. You have to have this thing. Right. Hey, what do you feel about this 15 minutes? I don't know, like, first, uh, the first time we tried, very calm, but the second and the third one, like, I have a lot of things on my mind. I think maybe because my mom's surgery is gonna, <coughs> she's gonna go to Vietnam, so that's what okay. Profession in heavenly during this 50 minutes? I think the 50 breaths point seems to be a same kind of thing. It's like my mind got real busy and just thinking about things I had to do today and so on. But then again, in the back of my mind, I know that the clock is still clicking, that my numbers are pretty much level. Yeah, that's still level. I want to say meditation about your breath, like the more you get older, the more easy for you to get calm. Yeah. Yeah, this is that's why we meditate every morning. If you work on it. Yeah, you get used to that. So we, we deal with the, when we interact with other people, when we deal with all kinds of problems, keep your mind calm. Because you have to kind of meditate. I'm curious why you have the five minute, five minute, five minute, as opposed to just 15. Yeah, it's better. So for you, you can break out the implements. Start with two, one, three, or five. Yes. Yes. It's up to you. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. It's up to you. It's your choice. You like <coughs> yeah. pick up the, which one is okay. better for you. There's no concrete rules. It's because it's your own medicine. How long do you meditate on your daily practice? Um, if I don't have anything to do, one hour, at least one hour in the morning, after I'm chanting, I'm in restoration, and one hour in the evening. It's just a minimum. Of course, sometimes I'm here in school, so 
escape uh, the uh, even in the worst time of the year. He said to us to harass me. Yeah. Hours long. Hours straight. Yeah. Hours straight. Straight. Do you count the whole time? No. Do you count the whole hour? Yeah. Because yeah, of course, sometimes we get in the day, sometimes we do we sleep too. So, but in the afternoon, we push back. This is my, this is my own sleep. But other people is different. Everyone is different. Anyway, so see that we can do this. We have to plan it in mind. Yeah. And that's your own medicine. You decide your medicine. No one can help you out, especially your emotion. You know, many people cannot control their mind while right? you do understand, right? And, and this is why it's so simple. It's there. You don't need to buy it's some, uh, somewhere else. But you can use that can I tell you a story? It's yeah. short. Um, my son, you know that my sons do jujitsu and Muay Thai kickboxing, which is not related to this really. But he had his first kickboxing with my boys uh, fight on Thursday, uh, Saturday, and someone came from the back room where all the fighters were, sat next to me, and they said, "Do you have twins?" I said, "Yeah." They're, are they one of them fighting? He said, "Yeah." And they said, "Oh, they were back there meditating before before yeah. the fight. So they were all meditating because he was nervous." So he, like, I guess he meditated to calm himself before he came out to the cage. So I, I thought, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> meditating. Okay. So. Yeah, so uh, like I told you, so next Monday you can bring a drink. Or uh, apple, anything can do the eat, drinking or okay, uh, eating. Okay, next Monday. Okay, related to the drink, that's okay. Right. Okay? All right, so this we can do from now until the end of the semester. Okay, so we can see. Okay, now, as last time, so we, we didn't have much time to watch a little clip. I want to show you a short clip about the uh, what you call Dharma broader. Yeah, Dharma broader, too.
movie's on Netflix. Oh, you watched yeah. last time? Um, yeah, I watched it, it last semester. Oh, we, we watched this first time, right? We watched this one the first time, right? Yeah. Okay. You, should, you showed the clip in your Buddhism class. Yeah. Yeah, but you can get the movie on Netflix. Oh, okay. Okay, last time, we, because we didn't have much time, so I didn't uh, have to talk much. You know, it's pure hard for them over there. That's why... <coughs> It's easy for them to have the mental illness. For us too, if we lock in the room for a day, we stress out a lot, not for, for years. So, but um, in in our views, you know, we prison that our mind. Is it right? Sometimes we couldn't control our mind. We can let the mind to control ourselves. Right, so that's why. This is the analogy that we we have on this. So, but for them, if they have, if they know the tools, even they stay in one room or one cell, in one uh, jail, if they know how to handle their, their mind, they will be free. Mentally, physically they will be there, but mentally they will be free. If they know how to handle their mind, otherwise it's a big disaster. It's be yeah, just for now. Okay, so today we um, continue to talk about mindfulness in theories, and that's why I um, asked you to, um, to give the uh, okay the model materials. So no one when he served in the army, army or no? he served where? In the army. army. Okay. So um, who are to start first? Um, I can start first. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and how to keep your core values as part of your character and your personality and all your decisions. Yeah. And so I thought that that was really important for if you're in charge of people in a military position. I mean, I would not personally ever choose to put myself in that position because I think it would be incredibly difficult to be responsible for other people's lives. And I think that there's probably a lot of um, situations where your orders conflict with your values and then you're in a position and you're responsible for all the people below you and you are responsible to follow orders and there's no choice there you have to follow orders so you have to find a way to find a balance between your orders and your core values and then be responsible to your troops and I think that's a very, very, very difficult thing to do. Um, I don't know how much freedom a, a military leader will have to do that, but I think that any any flexibility that they have for their own decision, they would have to be very mindful in each of those areas because I think it's limited, right? If you're given an order to do something, the only thing you can do is find the most mindful way to do that thing. It's not like you can't do it. I mean, that's not an option in the military, right? <laughs> okay. So if they're given an order, I mean, the only thing, the thing they can do is plan exactly how they would do it with whatever liberties they're given. And within those liberties, then they have to make the best, most mindful decisions. And I mean, obviously, daily practice would be vital in a situation like this, because it's going to be high stress. And as soon as you have responsibility for anybody, your stress goes up. And then if you're, if you're actually on the front lines or something, then it's just so much higher. And then if you deal with it, if you're in a battle situation, if you're responsible for, you know, killing someone and that's what you had to do, then you have to deal with all of the emotion for that. And you're also responsible for the, that situation for your troops. I don't know how much care is taken with a, a leader and their troops when a, a something happens like that where they're, you know, sent into battle. It's just like, oh, that's just part of the job, move on. Or if a leader can actually be like, okay, so 
I don't know if they talk about it after, or I don't know how that works. I guess it depends on the leader. But I think that trying to be mindful of the impact of those things on the people that serve under you is important because otherwise, if they go home with these things in their head and all this pressure, then then you have the PTSD and you have the guilt of you know having to take someone's life or you have grief of loss of your friends. So I think that my, mindfulness is really important in every level of what you're doing within the realm of what you can control. <coughs> yeah. Especially when they are in the barbecue, right? Mm -hmm. When the spirit is said that if they were commanders, mm -hmm. if they get the wrong order, their children would be killed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they would be killed too. If they place the wrong order, wrong movement, right? This is so, so important. This is not uh, to deal with the emotion, like uh, in our daily lives. This is between life and death, decision. Mm -hmm. it's, that's why it's more stress. It's more, it's more stress out in that kind of situation. When, when you do business, if you make the wrong decision, right, you can make up. But in the battlefield, you make the wrong decision. You, your life will be gone. Your, home, your children's you know, life will be in, in danger too. It's not easy. Yeah. Okay, anyone? Thank you. I, I yeah. think, you know, um, so I guess you just to start things out, I really wasn't a whole lot familiar with, like, I guess, all the liberties that a yield lieutenant might have. Um, but because I just kind of started out. Um, with how um, a lieutenant would make decisions. Again, I don't know if they get a lot of say in this. I guess I assume they did, but I could be assuming wrong. Um, but as far as when they're faced with, maybe they're given an order, and they're faced with a decision on how exactly to go about completing this task, um, whether it be, say, like, they're given a mission to go you know, take out somebody or take out a certain uh, person. Um, I think in making this decision, they need to kind of have that beginner's mind. And um, that and to say that they shouldn't go about it like I think thinking they know everything already. Although I mean, they are probably very experienced. I think it would be helpful for them to kind of approach it with that beginner's mind so they can be kind of mindful of any maybe new perspectives that they weren't aware of, they'd be more accepting of those. Um, so that's one way I think uh, it would be helpful. Another way I kind of, thought, the next I kind of focused on um, successes and failures that they'll experience during their um, tenure. Um, I think it's really important with failures to be accepting of them, as is anything. But I mean, especially I think if you're a leader, it's inevitable that you're going to experience, you're going to have some failures. Some things aren't going to go as planned. Um, and when those do, when those things do happen, um, I think it's important to not get like let it get the best you let it really control your emotions let, let it get you really upset because that i mean naturally i think that's what i would do if i were in the position if something didn't go as planned um i would be kind of maybe get down on myself about that um so i think it's important i guess just to be aware that uh, failures are going to occur, and when they do occur, accept them and don't try to fight them off and don't try to fight the feelings and negative emotions that go with that. Um, and also, that kind of goes along with that, I think you don't really try not to be uh, judgmental of those failures when they do come. Because um, I mean, the more judge, I, I feel like when a failure comes, for me, I kind of judge it as being bad and, um, and it will kind of hinder me from performing 
at my best uh, capability because I'm so focused and bogged down in this failure that I experienced. Um, I guess let's see if I have anything else here. Um, and I guess another one more thing that I did talk about in my paper was that I need to treat everybody that I'm in charge of in a kind of in a fair manner. I need to treat them all equally. Um, I think it's you know, it's natural for us to want to maybe favor some people over others. Um, obviously, I mean, we need to, you need to be aware of this, I think. And in doing that, you need to become aware that you have the tendency to do that and kind of notice when you are betraying, like if you are maybe not treating uh, this sector over here as good as you are the other one, um, you need to, again, become aware of that and try to correct that. Um, and kind of how I see, you're not going to be able to correct that, obviously, if you're not aware of it. So I just kind of see it as, I guess, kind of the, uh, what is that called, the observing self. When I guess you observe your emotions, your feelings towards others, and how you act and betray those feelings. Um, so, yeah. In this one, you talk about this. Yeah. 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 Do not act. Yeah, not the own emotion. Do not act on sensation or urgency. Remember, do your emotion. This is still good. Yeah. The emotion is not you, right? You have to separate, you have to recognize this. And otherwise, you're, oh, I'm, I'm angry. The different story, but I recognize that I'm angry, right? Anyway, so thank you. Um, it's a spirit talk. It's a spirit talk for, for the military service board. So, how, how long you serve now? Six years. Six years. Were you in the battlefield? Really? Okay, so you command anyone, uh, you follow the orders. No, I, I had five troops under me. How many? At one point. How many of them? Five. How many of them follow you? Five. Only five? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. We do what was called a quick reaction force. So, like, if someone attacks a base or, like, any type of, like, uh, interest we have in that area, like, we would respond. So, we had a, our ship went from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., so we did the night shift. Yeah, I don't know whether you know during the Vietnam War, there is some, um, one of the, uh, the controversial We uh, like massacre. You know, you know about this? Uh, you don't know about this? You don't know about this? Yeah. Oh, you made it back there? What's this about? It was um, really ugly. The American okay. troops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. American troops uh, went in, and it was uh, basically a peaceful village. And they named home the village, and there's a classic picture of a little girl uh, with her skin dripping off of her from uh, the name home. They, uh, Killed indiscriminately, and they just basically try to cover it up, and uh, they they kind of made a one fall guy of the whole thing, and he was uh, prosecuted, but basically all the others got off. And there's an interesting book about the war where that wasn't really the only occurrence; it was kind of like a I guess the mantra of the American troops was like, leave them all dead. Mm -hmm. And so they'd go into a village and kill them. But that was that was one that really stuck in American consciousness mm -hmm. and helped end the war. Yeah. This is, um, so uh, the soldier went to the village and they shoot any movement that they could see. And somehow many children, they run around and they shoot them too. So that's why it's this is really one of the controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, 
something that is much better. Anyway, so it's just not easy if you're not mindful of the of what you're doing, of, of who you should into, right? You may shoot uh, the civilians. There's a so there's a city uh, mission or something like that. The guy went out and interviewed these people after, like, uh, it's only even uh, five years ago, something like that. Interviewed the veterans of that war, and even to that time, their minds were tortured. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and so they never able to let it go. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy to let it go. Okay, and the one news? You let it try? Sure. Okay, um, yeah. Actually, I took a different approach because okay. my friend just joined the military. Okay. And um, he finished basic training in Texas about a month ago. Um, and so he was sending letters. Uh, he said the only form of communication he was allowed to have. Um, and he was talking about pretty much every letter he said that the main thing on his mind was how stressed out he was and how um, he didn't really know what he was getting himself into. And, um, he was saying like his whole that his fleet would at night when they would go to bed, he could hear like everybody just cry because he made it so long. Um, so he finished basic training and now he's up in Maryland doing tech training. Um, and he said it's a little bit easier because a little less stress, but I mean they only have like eight hours a day that they have to work and then they have the rest of them right off. But he said his the, the hardest thing is making sure that um, everything's perfect, that um, you don't upset your superiors. And actually, while he was in basic training, he was put in charge of some subordinates um, as they were coming in. And um, so, I, in my paper, I just talked about how, because I told him in one of my letters about how he could use meditation and MBSR to help him calm down at the end of the day whenever he had five minutes before he went to bed um, to reduce the stress because he was saying that was the source of most of his problems. Was, he was stressed out and didn't know how to cope with it. So, yeah. um, so it's involved a lot, uh, a lot of emotions. It's not only with your own emotions, but other people too. Um, yeah, of course, um, if you were in the battlefield, either you kill the enemies or be killed, right? Mm -hmm. So when you shoot, even enemies now, somehow, um, it's not easy to handle. It's still imprinting your consciousness, right? Um, you had that experience? Now, how could you deal with that? Um, at first, you deal with it because everybody else is dealing with it. So, so you get used to that? Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier because you have people supporting you. Some people have done it longer. Mm -hmm. yeah, and when you get back, you still remember that type of image, mm -hmm. sense in your mind? Yeah. I remember like uh, the first time I saw like a suicide bomber blow himself up. Like uh, I saw his limbs on the ground and I just thought it looked like a movie prop or something. Yeah. But you know, thinking to ourselves, it's like a real person. And you know, that, you think you think about the stuff that people in that country go through and it's just this is bad situation overall, I think politically too. So that's kind of why I got out. Yeah, it's not easy. That's why they have the PTSD right? mm -hmm. problems when they get back and they drink alcohol to uh, not let go, to but to shield this type of uh, memory away from. Mind, right? Yeah, it's it, like to make it blurry. Yeah. It doesn't make it go away, but it makes it like blurry. Mm -hmm. so, they don't need, so they don't want to deal with them. So it's not easy. You want to say something? Do you have something? Uh, uh, uh -huh. No, no, I mean that for, for the subject. You need the mindfulness and military. Oh, yeah. Uh, the one I read last night, they say something like um, mindfulness. I think like mindfulness, sickness. Yeah. It's about really to be or how they not only like do meditation, they also like practicing like exercise because they believe that like 
the more you like when you exercise, you still like practicing about like breathing, about like like refreshing your mind. So that is how it's happening for them a lot because they have to handle a lot of situation. One of the example I read an article is talking about in Iraq, in 2004, 2002, and uh, a lot of like soldier, like they have, you know, like to see a lot of their friend die. Or sometimes they have like flash of bomb, you know, it's really scared them a lot. So when they come back home and they couldn't, you know, like forget about what used to happen for them and their friend. It's so like it's really dangerous for their normal life because they only carry a gun around to protect themselves, but actually nobody hurt them. And make them stay away from family because they only put themselves in path. So they say like the more like they practice meditation and they do mindfulness fitness. So actually like have them know about at the moment and a strong development about the awareness because they know about they have to be controlled, they're tossing things and stick up that they're tossing control themselves. So it's helpful but it's not like directly but slowly. Um one of my uh Dama brother has been Follow the same order as mine. Um, he's oh, he passed away already. But um, when he was in Vietnam, he was uh, governor during the Vietnam War. And after the war, he came here with his families. And he did a job as a translator of all the courts. But later on, he, he went to the monastery to live as a monk. But somehow, he used to have kind of Uh, he, not always, most of the times, he thought that someone would try to uh, kill him, uh, try to um, assassinate him. <laughs> even in the temple. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> even a flash of light that they scare him too. It's, it's normal from, for the rest of his life. And it's not easy because uh, when he probably when he was in Vietnam, you know, in yeah. order to uh, maintain that status, that position, right? You have to fight, or we can say, kill a lot of people, harm a lot of people to keep that position. So even he, he came here and, and even became a monk, he still have a kind of in his mind. So it's so easy to get get away with that. That's why it's normal for people, especially the soldier came from Afghanistan, Iraq, and so forth, to have this kind of pride or this kind of uh, PTSD problems. Could you talk about <coughs> in Vietnam during the war, uh, some of the Buddhist monks, they uh, self emulated they, they burned themselves up? Oh, okay. You know about that? No. Oh, you know about that? You don't know about that? Okay, let me talk briefly. So during the Vietnam War in 1963, because um, of the oppression from the Catholic uh, person, uh, so it's a monk, a Buddhist monk, people did sell to protest that kind of oppression. And it's just the, the war news through those times. And even now, you know, the Tibetan people, I don't know whether we can talk about that yet. Um, they burn themselves in protest, the Chinese communist regimes that oppress their own people in, in the bed. You know about that? You don't know? So that's just, in Buddhism, this uh, somehow, in some exceptional cases, they burn themselves not because they want to commit suicide, they want to kill them themselves, but they do this for the cause of other people, the cause of the nation. Um, of course, if they, if they don't. Like uh, bombing suicidal, right? Mm -hmm. You kill other people in violent ways. But this is, is the ways to protest. Uh, it's just uh, they could not speak up and accept. I know, so that's it, right? Okay, so anyway, so that's why I used to advise young people 
if we want to serve the country, that's great. We need people to serve country, right? But somehow, it's better to serve people in the country. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, uh, to uh, list in the Coast Guard or National Guard is better. Don't go to the barbecue. Of course, uh, it's we can say that if no one is uh, protect our country, and we may come, but I think it's up to our, our conscience, right? So um, it's not easy. It's not easy. So it's still inclined in your mind about that kind of barbecue. Problem. Sometimes, yeah. It's, it's something really bad to live in. Like when I first got back, it was bad. Why? You mean paranoia? Like not having a gun. Like I carried a gun for six years. All of a sudden, putting it down and looking for where's my weapon at. <laughs> you know that when they went to Savannah last uh, summer, I went to a store. I went to the green tour, oh, yeah. and the, the, the store owner carried them. I'm so surprised. And I asked, I look at him and ask, "Why do you carry them? Is it snow more here?" And then it's in the West Georgia. Yeah. And yeah, really? It's very, very common in the South of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so surprised. There's a forest farm, but here, never we see this type of thing, right? We're scared to go away, right? I saw somebody the other day in the store. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Here's a Walmart. Yeah, Kroger's. It was probably Why are you supposed way to way? conceal it? Uh -huh. uh, it carries no, it. They, it. They're allowed to carry? You have to have yeah, a, like if you have a license, you have yeah. open carry. Concealed okay. carry is not allowed. But you're supposed to have open. Oh, if you carry it, you have to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. You have to have a permit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have to have a license. I have a I have a license for concealed carry, but I don't take mine with me. <laughs> <laughs> my whole family does. Oh really? It's normal in our family because my family's from the south, so it's normal for us. And so we'll go to the store and people will like stare at my boyfriend <laughs> or my stepdad, and then they're just like. I'm not gonna hurt you, are you still? <laughs> like this little boy came up to my boyfriend the other day, but he was in his police uniform, but he was still like, Why do you have a gun? And he was like, Well, I'm a police officer. And he was like, Oh. And he was like, Do you get to carry that all the time? And he's like, Actually I do because I have a license to. And then he was like, Well, why do you? And he was just like, I just do. <laughs> I just do. Why don't you? <laughs> I do because I want to. <laughs> Actually, that's the first time they ask you, do you scare the customer? They say it's, it's normal, right? In that sound, it's normal, right? Well, if some, you know, it's just not easy, right? If some, well, let's say, if we have some kind of animal, right, verbally, right? Uh, the most we can do is just walk away or some uh, or do something that is with our hand or example the boss. Uh, but when you carry a gun, sometimes you cannot control your anger. And you can take it out and shoot people easily. Is that right? It's not easy. When when you have that kind of emotion, you at that moment you may not care much. Especially if you have PTSD. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you black that or something, yeah. I say it's you have to take a course before you're allowed to carry a gun, though, or you're not. Which I kind of, I kind of wish that you did. Like, I know someone from Alabama, and he said they have to just go out to the range and show them that they know how to fire it, and that's it. But some oh, states, uh, yeah, I know. Safety. Ours, you don't even have to do that, though. And, no, here you just fill out the paperwork. Yeah, really? Yeah, you don't have to take it. 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 Yeah, you don't have to take I think you should have to. I think you should take, take a, like a, a gun safety class. I mean, you have to take a hunter's ed course to be a hunter. Hunter, yeah. I mean, why shouldn't we have to take a course to carry? There should be a gun safety course. I agree with that. I mean, we. My husband's a hunter as well, and he's taken hunter safety, and he's taught our kids about gun safety, and I know about gun safety. We all know how to take apart the guns and try to put them together and shoot them and whatever, and how to be safe about it. But not everybody knows that. I mean, mm -hmm. and if you can just fill out the paperwork and just get a gun. With a background check, that doesn't mean you know how to use it. Right, and it doesn't mean you know. So be mindful. And it's not like they're doing a psychology test too. To make sure you're not psychotic. I mean, yeah. Make sure you don't have some kind. Of, they're only doing a background check. That's just the criminality of it. That doesn't check to make you're sure you're psychologically you are, okay to you know, be carrying around a gun. Yeah. Even with a knife, right? <laughs> Even when you carry a knife, when you're angry, uh, you may not care much about 
God's God, right? Not the devil. So it's not easy. Anyway, um, yeah. This kind of bonding, right? It's like the opposite thing. Like every, I told her goes to school and said, everybody, you know, say I'm from my country in high school. And we know everybody know how to do, you know, use the guns. We tear up the park and we know how to put them together in high school. But actually, it never allow us to carry a gun at all. So I think like it's funny like some people in here, you, yes, you know how to use the gun, you're allowed to carry it, but sometimes you don't even know how to use it. And then some people, I just mean like thinking like if you have the license to use the gun, I didn't say that is wrong, but it's just like he said sometimes you know you you losing you know your behavior because you so much you know angry, you look like your friend or somebody you know, and you don't even know at that moment what you do. Just I don't know whether you remember probably sometime last month they shut down the campus because mm-hmm. one came to an opera. So funny. Wow. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's good to be safe, especially oh, yeah, if you okay. in a school where that um, has happened. Yeah. And it's because they didn't take the proper precaution because they thought that's good. not to do anything. I mean, even that situation it ended up being like a drill, but that doesn't hurt to like be yeah. safe. Yeah, you know? it wasn't. I don't think that they should. A lot of people were like, "Why did they do that?" Yeah. And I mean, they didn't. Like, if it was something, now. then you should remember. Be able to do remember it. the problem with Virginia Tech. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and some some high school found there. Oh, anyway, okay. So this one, let go back here. Yeah. So when playing with weapons, <coughs> it's not my fault. We may endanger our life and others, right? So this one is what we call my fitness training. There's a lot of articles that talk about this, and then I'd like to, um, to show you uh, the short video clip of this. So they uh, they part, they are uh, this uh, this not not an exercise to just show so people have to do meditation. And they have meditating marine. Using Buddha, <laughs> how the U.S. Army and Google of Mathmas. Um, this one there. This is a bit hard to hear, but um, there's a major general. He discussed about the Mathmas. <laughs> Thank you. 
So um, uh, again, so there's many, many articles and many beautiful clips as we can um, watch from the grid. Um, especially this one here. They have a uh, they list all the, uh, the articles. Uh, they do research about the news, how to apply partners in, in their training. Okay, I think uh, it's, it's good for today and now um, next week. Again, uh, imagine that you were selected. Uh, you were elected as mayor or city council. I, I, yesterday I went to um, uh, the basement of the Crestman, the Crestview building, and I read a story about a um, a year's uh, student who ran for mayor, for Jefferson mayor. I don't know whether you know that. Uh, what, what is the name of that? He, uh, uh, you know him, right? Yeah, he's okay. in my Oh, really? Okay. Okay, anyway, so imagine that you were elected as uh, mayor, city councilman, or woman, you know who, whichever, to pick up your role. Who can do your, your okay, so just model. choose you one want any one of them, and uh, later on you can send uh, your model to them. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> here, here is, is my model. Please follow. Yeah, so, so that can be mindful with your with your role, with your position. I voted for you. Let's be mindful, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, and. Um, if I forget to remind you next Monday, uh, after next, uh, next Wednesday we have off, right? Yes. yes. Thanksgiving holiday, right? And after that, on December the 1st, um, she will be my facilitator one more time. It would be good. Yes. Okay. December 1st, I have it written. Yes. Okay. We'll and, read them all. Um, because I have uh, some obligation that you see in the translation. So, anyway, so. Um, 
Uh, so please remember, yeah, you can bring the ring. I need, I need more food uh, for next Monday to, um, for mindful to do mindful eating. Okay? Uh, thank you. We have Tuesday class Monday. Thursday, well, at least for me, there's no classes on Tuesday. I don't think there are any classes. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Tuesday. No. So class Monday, no class Thursday. Right. Yeah. Oh, that is yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanksgiving break, right? I think the 20th is the last day. Well, when we come back, we have like one week left of regular class, and then it's like finals, so we have to leave. Yeah. Those are both.